Hi, everybody. I'm the founder of Clan Beat, and as you heard, I'm Kadri Duisk. Um, and we are building a growth and well-being tool for students to help them to take agency over their learning and build their learning up to based on their internal motivation. And, um, but I'm not here to talk about my startup today. And um, as our startup is focusing on students' growth and well-being, so they would be able to design better lives and uh, live their fullest potential, then I would love to tell you my story, how I reached to that point. This here is a lovely place in the middle of Estonia. Uh, it's called Valma. It's a very small fisherman village. Only 100 people live there, and almost everybody is fishermen except from my parents. Uh, this is a place where I came from. And um, when I was 15, I said that I'm going to move out from this place. And I want to go to the very big city, which is called Viljandi, um, and, um, and continue my studies there. Uh, but when I was 15, I didn't go for school for one month. I basically skipped school. I went to school into the wardrobe and then walked back because I didn't find any motivation to go there. And when, when my parents found out, they didn't put me down or say bad things about me. They said, figure it out yourself. You caused this, you, you have the power within you to make it OK. And uh, this is like one of the very important life lessons for me, which I use while raising my own child, who is 15 now, uh, and also when communicating with my team, uh, that I really want to build leaders around me uh, and not to babysit uh, my own children and also my team. And I think uh, taking responsibility for your own actions and knowing inside that uh, you can actually do those things is a really powerful feeling. And I'm really thankful I got this when I was young. But when I was 16, I started traveling in the world as a model. And uh, this was really nice and glamorous job. Uh, I have lived two years in Hong Kong. I have lived in Bangkok, Shanghai, um, Paris, Milan. And uh, this career teached me a lot. You have to go to 10 castings a day when you're just 16 years old. You don't have Google Maps. Um, and uh, you have to design your own days in a way that you wouldn't burn out. It was really helpful also when later talking to investors. If you get 100 no's, then you maybe might get one yes. And uh, building up internal self-esteem, meaning that uh, if you are internally know who you are and what value you are bringing, then it doesn't matter what others are saying. But it wasn't always that glamorous. These are my baddest moments, uh, and uh, many of the bad moments are even not documented somewhere. Basically, when I was 17, I had my first TV adver advertisement uh, in Paris, and I was very excited about it. I thought I'm going to do yogurt uh, advertisement. And I went to the set, and I was put into white condom latex bodysuit. All of my body was covered, only my face was showing like this. And they said, oh, you have to be a happy bacteria among other 40 bacteria. Uh, and uh, then I understood that it takes a long way to climb the ladder. It doesn't just happen like this. And, uh, but I really proudly took this ladder. And this has led me to really nice places in life. I worked for Chanel, Armani. I've been in Vogue, Marie Claire, worked for L'Oreal and uh, Calvin Klein. Uh, because I was willing to make the job behind, which was uh, required, uh, to reach to that level. And um, I'm really thankful for this journey. But this also gave me the possibility, when I was living in Hong Kong, there was this nice place called IT Market, where you could buy the latest gadgets, you could buy all the software in the world for $1, uh, and I bought so many. I bought Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, I started programming. And uh, when all the other models went to nightclubs in the night time and weekends, I was at home. And I was thinking that if a 13-year-old boy can build a website, so can I. 
And I was exhilarated by the feeling when you actually code something and you push a button, something changes in the interface and it can be reached to other people. And uh, this was really empowering for me. And uh, I knew that I wanted to do a career in IT and bring impact for that life. But uh, the startup which I mentioned before, Clanbeat, was not my first startup and not my first company. Um, when I was living in Hong Kong, I got a message that my brother has died. Uh, he was two years younger than me and uh, he had went sailing with my dad and his best friend and uh, the boat flipped and he was the only one who didn't swim back to the shore. And this was actually for me the time when I started appreciating life, thinking what kind of impact do I want to bring to this world? And basically starting to think that I should wear the nicest clothes every day, I should eat from the best plates every day, and I should think about always um, how am I happy and what kind of impact I'm bringing. And um, this was really hard times. I moved back to Estonia, uh, went to university, married, got a kid, started to value family a lot. And um, out of this discomfort grew something really beautiful. Uh, me and my husband back then, we founded a funeral parlor, uh, which was nominated as the most innovative service in Estonia. And it was uh, meant to give the possibility that you can buy all funeral services online. Uh, you can plant yourself as a tree and grow later in a lovely park. And we wanted to make the transformation from having this kind of dark feeling around funerals into celebrating the life that has been existed. So out of really big discomfort came something beautiful. And um, this is something I'm taking with me. And at the same time, when we founded this funeral parlor, uh, which is very successful right now, if you want to look up memories.de, uh, we found a clan bit. And um, this also came out of personal pain. Uh, I had just quit my high paying job in advertising fields and um, uh, because I didn't have a partner to talk to uh, about self-development, I didn't see anywhere where I could develop. And um, I met up with my future co-founder Ragnar Seis and we decided to found a company which is doing personal development tool for uh, fast growing companies and we were offering it through one-on-ones. And uh, Ragnar, I'm really thankful for him because he literally threw me into the cold water uh, because I knew nothing about startups. And I knew a thing or two about sinking. Uh, I refused to sink. And I was uh, basically learning everything on a go. When I was having an investor meeting, Ragnar at the next to me was talking about term sheets and about convertibles and equity, and I was in the... Um, below of the table and Googling what do those words mean, basically. And uh, really doing things based on the go uh, gave me a really big boost because uh, I saw changes happening. I saw product developing, I saw team growing, I saw customers coming. And uh, it gave me this kind of feeling that everything is possible. But then we were accepted into 500 Startups, uh, which is a renowned uh, uh, startup accelerator in San Francisco. And uh, we spent four months there and we decided to do a, a pivot uh, to a different uh, target group, which was not anymore startups, but HR of the companies. And when we came back from there, then our CEO um, uh, decided that uh, the startup scene is much more uh, exciting for him and, uh, and he left and the rest of the team left with him. So basically I was left with working product but no team uh, and uh, no uh, runway for a very long time. And uh, as we were going to San Francisco and I came back from there also, I had find, found out that my husband back then had found other interests, so we had to break up. So basically, I was left there with 
I was alone uh, in my company, in my family, and uh, I had to figure out what to do next. So basically, you call it the white paper sheet day. If you go and, uh, and talk to coaches and they have this like, you could be anything you want. What do you want to be if you have, would have no boundaries? So basically, this was this day for me. And I had the possibility to build everything up or to do something new. Uh, and I really started to look into myself. What do I want to do? And I found out that I love people. The people's growth is very dear to my heart. And I'm really humbled by human potential uh, because of my own uh, experiences. And uh, then I started to look into the data of our product and uh, I found out where the engagement was. And it was in schools. And uh, I was like, why I was not looking at it before? Because like only these kind of uh, uh, hard days are making you look into those. And I found great engagement there. And uh, I went to talk to the school principals and found out that there is actual pain. There are no people to deal with people and people's growth in there is uh, under supported. And I got really inspired by talking to school leaders and found out that the education in general is broken because education system is coming from industrial area. And there is so much to do in unleashing the human potential. This is me swimming in Iceland uh, one month ago in glacier waters. Uh, but this is only because I have taken into my uh, mm, heart developing a brain that uh, is okay with hardship. And I'm doing it purposefully. I'm designing my days based on, I do one thing that scares me and one thing that inspires me. Sometimes they are the same thing. And I think uh, when I was doing one podcast a few weeks ago, uh, who is doing podcasts with uh, many, many founders, 40 founders, he had done podcasts with 40 founders and he said, all the founders are telling the same story, like be brave, go after your dreams, uh, don't give up. Everybody's having the same uh, mantras. But so what? Now you know the formula how to uh, develop a brain uh, that can handle anything. And, uh, and I'm, I love to bring variety into this development because uh, uh, I'm doing many kinds of stuff. I run my marathons. Uh, I love extreme runs, as the previous guy already told as well. You, you are seeing pattern here, you see. And um, I think uh, if you do those things purposefully, then anything which comes up in your professional life doesn't scare you anymore. It's like, you know, I got this. And you can stay calm because you have already done this like heart pumping exercises somewhere else. And uh, right now, uh, startup life does not scare me. It excites me. And anything that comes in front of me is an opportunity. So uh, this is the mindset I really love to live. And as we are building a software for students, then I'm really well aware of where the growth happens in life. If you have 80% of your time where you're in your comfort zone and 20% where you're out of your comfort zone, then you're growing and then you're not stressed out. And let's think of education system, how many kids are actually living this kind of life in schools, like very little. Uh, that's why we are really passionate about designing personalized learning solutions which could adapt into the different uh, human types. Uh, but to think about yourself as well. Uh, are you living this right now? Because if you're going out from this ratio for more than three to four months, you're going into burnout. And if you're not mindful about your days, then uh, burnout is not a nice thing. Uh, I've interviewed many, many people and uh, I haven't experienced it myself, but I have heard how horrible it is. And uh, if you don't make your life in a way that uh, you are putting yourself out there and you're doing those things, then nothing is going to happen. Um, and this kind of mindset helps me to do 6 a.m. goals with my clients in Singapore and Australia. This helps me to travel into cultures where I like never been. This helps me to do things at the first time in my life which I never been done because those things which I'm doing in my startup 
like nobody has done those things before. And uh, I'm living this life every day. And, uh, but at the same, same time, uh, I really, really urge you to have fun as well, because these are my values, which I have uh, been living uh, for many, many years. And I have actually worked on my values to find out what those are and, and write them down. This might not seem really different to what you have seen in some inspirational posts, but, uh, but I urge everybody to work with your own values because all the decisions in your life are going to be much more easier if you have made those uh, uh, decisions. And, and if you see that have fun is there also, I really try to work on it that I would have fun at the same time when I'm working on my goals. And this is my lovely team right now. And, uh, and I'm really proud of those people because every day I'm feeling that I'm the most stupid person in the room. Every time when I'm talking to my team, every time when I'm talking to my uh, clients, and because I didn't know nothing about education in a way that I haven't been in education world. And I have thrown myself into the field where I don't know much, but I have gathered people around me who are really knowledgeable about it. We are working together with scientists and, uh, and I wouldn't be here today if there wasn't for one person who is sitting in here, who is Martin Heck, who is uh, our first angel investor in the clan beat, which is uh, doing the new wave in education and personalized education. So thank you. Because you always have to have one crazy guy who is believing in your dreams and makes it all reality. And then today we have uh, raised another round of 1 million uh, euros and uh, we are able to bring the new education to the world. But thank you. All this for growing. Don't, don't go just yet. We have uh, questions. A couple of questions, yes. yes. Uh, if an audience, uh, someone from the audience has a question, you, you really don't like using Slido, I understand, but maybe somebody just wants to raise their hand and, you know, shout out. No? Still no? I'm prepared for that situation. <laughs> <laughs> I think my talk was so engaging that you didn't have any time to write any questions. Yeah, exactly. Right? So focused. Um, do you want to share the most painful learning from your startup life? Most painful learning? Like work-wise. Mm -hmm. you, rem you mentioned that you, you know, had to Google some words in the beginning and so on. Mm -hmm. My most painful learning was that uh, if you're out of startup world, then you're seeing all those success stories and you're seeing that the hockey uh, stick growth, and, and, but you don't see the work behind. And for me, this was, I, I learned it on my own skin, that you actually have to put in the work, you have to put in the long hours, you have to do everything you can. And, uh, and this was, painful in the beginning because it seems so hype from outside, but if you're jumping in, then uh, you actually see that the ratio of succeeding uh, and standing here today even is, uh, is really hard. And, uh, but I think the determination uh, is a key here. And, uh, and as Marusta said before, that uh, also don't give up, like don't, don't fail fast and don't give up. So I think this is something really We nice. have another one. You say, I repeat, so people are at home also here. Sure. Uh, how do you hire people from skill sets you don't yourself have? If you need a program, you're not a program. Or you need sales, you're not. I've never done it before. I don't hire skill sets. I hire people uh, in a way that uh, CV for me is not important. Uh, I'm. First, I'm trying to find out if, if those people whom I, am I hiring are matching our values. And this is much more important. I still believe that skills can be learned. Uh, and uh, although I haven't hired anybody who is totally, totally incapable of doing anything or writing any code, there is some processes, of course. But the, first of all, I'm looking at them as a people. Have you failed with that? Um, with your gut feeling, in, for in, example? In my new team, no. No, not yet, <laughs> not yet. I I'm not asking you further. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Give a big applause to Katri for her story. Thank you, Katri. Okay.